Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today I have a vintage haul for all of you. However, uh, this is for once not a thrift haul because these are gonna be items that I've picked up shopping online over the past few months as opposed to out thrifting. I do a lot more thrifting on my channel than I used to. Uh, if you go back to some of my older videos, you'll notice it's a lot more uh, vintage accessory hauls or Etsy sort of hauls, things that I've bought online. I just haven't been able to do as much online shopping this year as I have in the past due to budgetary constraints really, just because uh, I, thrifting is like the best bargains and then online shopping is a little bit above that. And then like in-store vintage shopping, I find is kind of like the top prices you'll pay for vintage. So I've been kind of hanging out near the, near the bottom level of budget. And we know how I like to shop a little bit strategically here on this channel. I guess thrifting is the exception to that because when I'm thrifting, I, it's, you know, I'm at the, the um, mercy of the thrifting gods of what will appear that day. Whereas when I'm shopping online, I'm usually looking for very specific things. Like I'm looking for cobalt blue gloves, which I always am and I never can seem to find any. Um, or I'm looking for like a black velvet hat or very specific things. That's how I do my online shopping. Um, many of you who have been around here on the channel for a while know that. Um, so these are some items that I picked up that most of this is stuff that I was looking for specifically. And then a few things were like fun surprises. So let's just jump on in and I'll show you what I've picked up over the last few months shopping online. The first item I have to show you today are these very fun earrings. I'll insert a close up as well. These are just some sort of clear acrylic or lucite earring um, like flat coin sort of shaped earring with a clip on back on them. Of course, these ones I probably will again, take the clip on part of them off and put a post back on them just so they're more comfortable for me to wear. I just really liked the rainbow star glitter. These are very fun and sort of kitschy unicorn glitter princess earrings, but that's all right. They, are, they do remind me a little bit of like large versions, like the grown up version of like stick on sticker earrings from the past, you know, those like little sticker earrings that you would, they came on like a card when you had, were a child and didn't have your ears pierced. These are kind of like the grown up glam version of that in some ways. They're a little bit kitschy, but that's okay. Uh, sometimes I'm a little bit kitschy as well. And I think these are just fun with even more modern outfits as well. Up here in my dark hair, it's nice to have something glittery and fun and colorful. And I just thought these fit the bill perfectly. I think I was having sort of a harder week the time I got these, if I remember correctly. And I just wanted a small like treat myself kind of moment. And I think these were under $15. So I picked these up on Etsy and I'm happy to have them in my collection. Another pair of earrings I have to show you are these little antique brass lantern shaped earrings. I wear my gold lantern earrings. They're actually sitting right here. These ones here on the channel all the time. And people are always asking me about them. Unfortunately, I picked up these charms um, at like Michael's or Joanne's a really long time ago, like several years ago. And I just don't know where we can get more of them. Trust me, if I knew where to get more of these, I would also buy more of them because many of you seem interested in these earrings and I would totally love to make them available to you on my uh, hopefully coming soon Etsy shop. However, I can't seem to find any more of these charms, but I was looking for lantern charms and ended up finding these antique brass ones. And I quite like antique brass finished things as well. Um, it's less of a vintage color or like less of a true vintage style, but definitely has a vintage look to it, of course, being antique brass. Um, but I found these really cute lantern charms and I thought it would be good as a, just a little earring on an ear wire. So I actually am going to be listing some of these in my shop soon. I'm just wanted to order some, um, Nimodium, Nimonium, I don't remember. I'll put the name down here. A uh, special metal ear wire that's better for sensitive ears and like people who um, need to have nickel free and things like that. So I got some fancier ear wires. You, these ones uh, that I have on here are actually just regular cheap ones from the craft store. But I wanted to, if I was gonna make anything available in my shop, I wanted to make sure that it was something that was gonna be allergen free for those of you who need um, higher quality ear wires in your life. So I'm, I'm gonna have a couple of pairs of these available on my Etsy shop just to raise some funding for my next lookbook video here. So if you like lantern earrings or wanna help support me on the channel here, go ahead and check out the link to my Etsy shop in the um, description below and get, get yourself some lantern earrings yourself if you'd like. Another piece of vintage jewelry I have to show you is this gold toned bracelet. This is just a 1950s or 60s sort of modernist or like mid-century modern, almost brutalist looking charm bracelet or not charm bracelet, but link bracelet, I suppose. It's got these little rectangles that are both um, got like shiny rectangles on them and then also a more rougher texture one. It's kind of common of Brutalist jewelry to mix textures like this. I really love Brutalist jewelry, mid-century modern Brutalist jewelry. So I'm always on the lookout for it. And I bought this one actually for my mom for Christmas and she decided that she wasn't going to wear it because it's just a little bit big on her. So I'm rehoming it with me in my jewelry box instead. So she said she wasn't going to wear it. So I bought this for her, but now it's going to be mine instead. Another gold toned 1950s or 60s bracelet I picked up recently was this Sarah Coventry gold toned, very like Egyptian and also yet atomic and mid-century looking bracelet. Of course, those of you who may recognize this uh, style may know that I have the necklace and earrings of this already. It's something actually I get asked about quite a lot. I um, was wearing this 
the earrings and the necklace, or maybe even when I just had the necklace, because I've been adding the pieces. Instead of buying this all at once as a set, I've been buying each piece individually on Etsy as I find it, just as a cheaper way to collect sets sometimes. Sometimes you can find a full set for a deal on there, and sometimes it's cheaper to actually buy the bracelet, earrings, and necklace separate. Um, so that's what I've been doing with the Sarah Coventry set. But I actually get asked about this necklace all the time, because I think I was wearing it in my Paris haul video from several years ago, but I still get comments today asking where I got that necklace. And of course it is vintage, like most of my jewelry that I wear, um, but I did get it on Etsy and it's actually quite a common one. It's not very rare. So if you are interested in the this bracelet or the necklace that matches it, it's usually available on Etsy. There's usually a few at a time listed on there and it's just Sarah Coventry. So I would just try searching Sarah Coventry gold and you should be able to find the pieces from this set. And the last bracelet I have to show you today is this one. I again will insert a close up. Again, it's just the same sort of style with like links and then a fold over clasp. I buy a lot of bracelets in the style. I, lot of, I buy a lot of book chain bracelets as well. That's another style I really quite like. But this one is just a costume jewelry piece with some black enamel on it. And the reason I picked up this one was because I was in the market for a black bracelet. Um, again, this is black and gold, but we're getting halfway there. I'm usually, again, shopping strategically, so I was looking for a black bracelet to pair with other black or gold, black and gold jewelry, because I wear so much black in my wardrobe, but it was kind of a missing piece for me not having a bracelet with black in it. So I was happy to pick this one up for quite a deal. I think this was $10 plus like three or $4 shipping. So again, under $15 for something I was looking for and was missing from my collection, and I am happy to have it now. Then the last jewelry piece I have to show you today is actually in my opinion, quite spectacular. Uh, this one was $24 all the way from Czech Republic, and it is this amazing articulated rhinestone snake brooch. Um, of course, now I've mentioned it several times here on the channel, I will be doing a Slytherin lookbook for fall here. So I've been trying to look for pieces that will go well for styling outfits for that lookbook. And so I decided to pick up a snake brooch and I couldn't find any good silver ones, but I did find this green rhinestone number who I just think is just fabulous. He doesn't have a name yet, but you know, I took it out of the box and it was even like more sparkly and nicer than I even thought it would be. So I'm super happy after, when you order something internationally, you never really know. And it's like even less returnable, not that vintage on it online um, or on Etsy is ever really returnable. Usually you are just kind of taking a bet on something. And I was so pleased this was even better than I thought it would be when I got it out of the package. I do tend to like to buy brooches quite large. So I was glad to find one that was a good palm sized snake brooch here for my Slytherin lookbook. I'm sure this is gonna look really good in a black suit or with all kinds of things for that, um, for styling those looks. So really happy to pick this guy up. I think it's super fun. I'm sure I will get a lot of wear out of this. I do have one pair of gloves to show you all today. These ones are a sort of tealish turquoise sort of peacock blue color. I'm not exactly sure what this color would be officially called. It's a very nice like petroled turquoise. That's not a real color, but I'm, you know, you, you let me know what you would call this color in the description below. It's like a turquoise teal. It's a little bit darker to be a turquoise, but sort of in that range. I actually find it quite hard to find colors, different colors of blue gloves for whatever reason. I'm always on the lookout for cobalt blue and I still haven't found any, unfortunately. There was a pair I was watching that then sold before I could hit buy now, which I was very bummed about, but I was happy to pick up this peacock blue color to add to my rainbow of gloves in my collection. So that's it for the vintage accessories I have to show you today, but I do have a couple of clothing items to show you as well. As we know, most of the time I'm doing my vintage clothing shopping at the thrift store or making reproductions things here myself um, in my sewing room. But I did actually pick up a few things online over the past few months, so I wanted to show those to you today, of course. And the first thing I have to show you is this 1950s nylon slip. This is actually a, um, like very similar to other nylon slips I have, except for this one is actually from the 1950s. And the ones that I usually am finding, I usually am buying at the thrift store. They're from the 1980s or um, 1990s, more recent ones. So I wanted to buy a real 1950s nylon slip as well. Although the styles are very similar, the 50s ones do have much nicer detailing. It's got all this different piece work and like applique and lace down here on the hem and then up near the neckline as well. Something just a little bit more special, a treat myself kind of little gifty that I bought actually for my own birthday. Um, I decided to splurge on this slip, which I think was $25. It's sometimes hard to find them in my size. This one is a size 42. Um, so the bust is a 42, which fits me quite well. Um, gives me a little bit of room actually to move around, which is nice. And this is from a brand called Movie Star. So can't get much more glamorous than that. It's really nice to buy, spend a little bit of money on some cuter lingerie sometimes, even if it's just for you as this is for me, but you know, you can treat yourself every once in a while, right? And the first real clothing item that's not, you know, 
that's meant to be seen are going to be these shorts that I picked up online on Etsy. These are 100% rayon little floaty pleated front short. Um, I say keep saying little shorts as if they're little, which for modern, by modern standards, these shorts are quite long and almost full like a skirt would be. And they definitely still have twirl factor, which is nice. But uh, whenever I think of brown and white together, I always think of that one dress that Julia Roberts wears in Pretty Woman. I guess for some reason, that's just my association with brown and white polka dots. And so though this dress has nothing to do with that, it sort of reminds me of that outfit for whatever reason. Just brown and white polka dots are always gonna be associated with that look for me. But I was really happy to pick up these shorts. I think they're really great neutral and really exemplify that sort of 1940s fluttery short look that I was looking for this summer and that I was talking about my last thrift haul video. So I was happy to pick these ones up online. Again, these were under $20. I can't really remember how much I paid for them. I think it was 15 bucks. So not a huge price and they fit me really well, are very comfortable and really give the fluttery look I was looking for. The next clothing item I have to show you is this little gray jacket. It's actually a black and silver brocade up close. It's a really nice textured, shiny kind of rayon fabric. I think it will work for daytime with a wool, like a black wool pencil skirt or a gray wool pleated skirt like I have. But I also think it would be really cute for evening with like a black velvet pencil skirt perhaps and like a cute little evening hat or something something with rhinestone jewelry perhaps. I think it could be dressed up or down this nice rayon brocade. I always love a brocade and I always love a rayon as we know. But this nice three quarter sleeve on here, it is a little bit big on me. Um, shopping online, of course, you're always, you know, you never. it's hard to know how much ease someone factors into their measuring, things like that. So this one fits me perfectly across the bust, but it is a little bit big in the waist. So I think in my next thrift flip video, I will show how I'm going to tailor this jacket just a little bit. I don't want to do anything that's irreversible because this is a 1950s piece and I don't really want to, you know, ruin it for the next person. Although this jacket will be with me for the foreseeable future. So I do want to take it in so it fits a little bit better and nips in my waist just a little bit more because it is, because it does have like maybe three or four inches of excess in the waist for whatever reason. I think it was listed as a 34 waist, which is bigger than my waist measurement, but usually with a jacket, I try and factor in ease, but it's just a little bit too big. So I think I'll be taking it in, maybe pinching in a little bit of extra dart, taking some of the fullness out with darts or something like that in my next thrift flip video. So I will put this in the fix it pile for that next video. And lastly of the vintage clothing items to show you, I have this amazing 1940s suit I picked up locally here in Denver, actually at a vintage shop downtown. I'll try and find the name of the vintage shop and put it on screen here because I don't remember what it was called. We were just kind of, me and a friend were popping into different shops down there and we popped into this store and I made a beeline for the suits as I always do. This one I think was listed as $115, but they were so surprised that I was actually looking for suiting that they did knock the 15 off for me. So, or maybe it was 110 and they knocked $10 off for me because they were just so excited to meet someone who actually was excited for 1940 suiting. But of course I am, that's my, literally my favorite thing. I do like to usually try and pick up a new suit before fall each year, uh, if I can. This one was, you know, quite a deal at only $100. It does have a little bit of moth damage on the very back of the collar, but usually that's covered with hair even even my short hair tends to cover the back of the collar. So that was the only damage I could see on it. It's just a cute style. I love the double breasted um, look because it's something that's hard for me to find that fits nicely. Usually things pull across the bust too much for double breasted things to lay nicely. And then the square buttons on this, I thought were a really cool accent. So I was just super excited to have found this suit and I'm really happy to have added it to my collection. It's a color I don't really have either. It's sort of a grayish brown with a rusty red pinstripe running through it. Just seems so his girl friday or even kind of blade runnery the 82 version of course so i was happy to find this suit that makes me feel a little bit like rachel from blade runner i always love a strong shouldered 1940s suit so always happy to add another one to my collection and those was a bit of a splurge for me i think it was worth it just because i tried it on and just fit perfectly and i had one of those magic moments at the vintage store and i knew i had to have it so thank you to my friend alexander for spotting me 20 bucks so that i could buy this suit you know didn't want to end up with overdraft fees, but I'm not very responsible. I've said it before. And lastly today, I do have two modern items to show you that I will be incorporating into my vintage style, of course. Firstly, I have these Madden Girl shoes. Those of you who uh, have very keen eye may notice that I have these actually in black suede already. I wear them in a couple of, I've worn them several times in videos here on the channel, the black suede version of these in like my styling portions of my video, just because they seem to go well with lots of different summer outfits. And so when I saw this colorway, the blue with white stripes go on sale for only $15 and I knew how comfortable the black ones were, I went ahead and picked up these ones as well for, you know, only $15 for a pair of shoes that you already know are gonna be comfortable. That's a pretty good deal. And I thought these would just look so cute with like either a red dress, a yellow dress, 
even like a Kelly green this color would be cute with, and then of course with white dresses in the summertime. So I hope I get a little bit more wear out of these as the weather is still quite warm here in Denver, I should be good to go. And the last item I have to show you all today is this Anne Klein handbag, actually. This is a new Anne Klein bag that I got at TJ Maxx yesterday, so I'm sure it's probably a couple of seasons old because I think that's how TJ Maxx works. Pretty sure it's like the off, the items that didn't sell at like department stores or from brands end up at TJ Maxx. So I feel less bad about buying new items if I'm gonna buy it there. Of all the different modern stores, I think I would be most comfortable shopping at TJ Maxx. The only reason I even got this bag or was there was because I was out shopping with my mom and she shops there. Um, I wasn't expecting to find anything, but I did find this. I wanted something that was big enough to fit my DSLR camera in it if I wanted to go somewhere and bring my camera. So I wanted something a little bit bigger because most vintage bags you can't fit a DSLR in. So I thought this was a nice classic vintage look even though it is a modern Anne Klein bag. And I am always buying Anne Klein at thrift store, so I guess I just quite like their sensibilities. So those were the items I have picked up over the last several months, either online or in vintage shops as opposed to out thrift shopping. Usually I'm doing thrift hauls here on the channel, but I wanted to show you the other things I have added to my collection over the past pretty much year um, that weren't items that I found out thrifting, but items that I found in other ways, either online, uh, at a vintage shop or even in a modern store. I do look high and low everywhere for vintage style and uh, I will take a modern item, I will take a vintage item, whatever it is, I think you can still get a vintage look without having to buy true vintage all the time. But every once in a while you do find a true 1940s suit and you just have to splurge for it. Do let me know what your best vintage find has been over the last several months in the comments below and I will see you again here on the channel real soon. Bye.